I've been doing MC Rider for about seven years now, releasing a weekly video focused on road skills or road strategy, using both my personal experience on a motorcycle and from the perspective of an MSF and Total Control motorcycle instructor, where I taught riders for several years all over North Texas. Before starting MC Rider, there were a few motorcycle channels that kind of sparked my interest in creating motorcycle-related content on YouTube. One of them you've probably run across at some point on YouTube, and that's a channel called Chase on Two Wheels. You know, back when I first started watching Chase, he never took his helmet off, so his face was always hidden from the camera, even when doing a talking head video like this. Now, some of you might wish I would adopt that policy so that you didn't have to look at me all the time, but... I'm sorry, I have to work with what the Lord gave me, and unfortunately, this is about as good as it's ever going to get. Now, to say that Chase's channel has been a success on YouTube would be an understatement. Currently, he has over 1 million subscribers, and Chase has always presented entertaining content with a sense of humor and humility that's much appreciated. I don't get to watch as much YouTube these days as I did back then because I'm more busy making my own content. But I did run across a video the other day that Chase produced about two years ago. The video was part of a Learn to Ride series, and the title was Riding a Motorcycle in Traffic for the First Time. Since I do a lot of road strategy content, that title caught my attention, so I clicked on it to see what my old friend had to say. And hopefully without coming across as being too critical of Chase and in the spirit of adding to the conversation, I want to break that video down a little bit and talk about a few key points. First, you might be asking why I'm doing this. Well, here's why. That video on Chase on Two Wheels has over 1.6 million views. Did I say earlier that he was successful on YouTube? If not, he's successful on YouTube. That's a whole lot of writers getting a mix of some good advice and demonstration for writing in traffic for the first time, and in my opinion, some advice and demonstration that I think requires further conversation. So this week on MC Rider, let's look at some clips from that video and have that conversation. I wanted to talk about the differences between downtown and city riding and how it compares to highway riding. If you watch more than five minutes of MC Rider, you'll know one of the biggest road strategies that I talk about is time and space, having time and space. That includes having a good following distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Here we see an example of Chase riding very close to that car that's in front of him. Now remember, we're looking for a two to three second following distance. So let's look at this example and a few others and see how much following distance Chase is allowing himself in these situations. An easy way to determine your following distance is to count it off in your head. Use a fixed object on the road and count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Let's use this white line as an example and see what the following distance is. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. So the following distance comes up short in this example. You're shooting for a two to three second following distance, but that's going to fluctuate some with traffic. You won't always be able to keep that following distance, but you know, 90 to 95 percent of the time, you can do that on a motorcycle. Some people say it's impossible when traffic gets heavy. I do it every day when I ride here in DFW. Just to prove I wasn't cherry picking a bad example here, let's look at a few others throughout this video, and we'll count those off as well. 1001, 1002, 1003. And the problem of following distance in the city is also carried out on the highway, as we see here. 1001, 1002, 1003. To Chase's credit, he does recognize this as an issue for his riding habits. So guys, let's talk about a, uh, the follow distance real quick. How close you should be to cars. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm pretty bad about this. I follow a little too closely sometimes. When you're on the highway or you're riding period, remember something when it comes to follow distance. The faster you're going, the farther you need to come to a stop. So Chase does recognize this as an issue and it's not just a chase on two wheels issue. I rode one time with a fellow rider coach here in DFW. We were going across town, and man, on the highway, he was right on the bumper of the car in front of him. I'm thinking the whole time, dude, you need to back up. 
So it's a rider issue. And when that issue becomes a habit, all we're waiting on at that point is the wrong circumstance to meet us at the wrong place on the road. And because of our bad habit of riding too closely to the vehicles around us, we're not in a position to do something effectively about it. Another important habit to develop is having an escape route from the vehicles around us, especially when coming to a stop at stoplights. We want to have an escape route left or right, and part of that is the distance in which we stop back from the vehicle. We need to have enough room between us and the vehicle to effectively execute an escape route. So we can see there's a good escape route to the right, but because of his stopping distance from the vehicle in front of him, it's going to be very difficult to execute that without clipping the bumper of that car in front of him. So stop far enough back so you can execute your escape route either left or right. Another thing I noticed, guys, you guys probably saw it a second ago. Something flew out of the back of that truck. That tells me that that guy's got a lot of stuff in the back of his truck that he doesn't have securely placed down. So you know what I'm going to do? What is he doing? I can already tell you guys, the truck in front of us is not paying attention. I would bet you that that guy's on his cell phone or he's preoccupied with something. Distracted drivers are not only a problem, but distracted riders are a problem as well. You need to be, very, you're gonna, you need to be vigilant all the time as a rider, but in the city, it is going to take a little bit more mental energy for you guys to be paying attention. There's so many more things. There's crosswalks here. Now we're going to go into an area like I'm in a too high of a gear. I need to shift down. So whether it's moto vlogging, talking on your cell phone through your Bluetooth device or listening to music, if it is a distraction between you and what's happening on the road, it's contributing to the problem. If you guys notice, now that we've merged into traffic on the highway, my job is done. The only thing I'm worrying about right now as a motorcyclist are cars around me. My only job right now is to make sure I don't hit that truck, make sure that this truck doesn't run into me, and make sure that I don't slam on brakes too hard so that the car behind me hits me. Now, Chase probably didn't mean literally that the only thing he's worried about is the cars around him not hitting him, but even if that's the primary thing you're worried about, you're setting yourself up for failure. As a rider, I'm far less worried about what's going on ahead of me. I'm far more worried about the person behind me. Because if somebody's not paying attention behind me, and I have to come to a quick stop here on the highway, that person could very likely hit me, and I want to avoid that at all costs. So I'm going... Statistically, this opinion is the exact opposite of what it should be. There are many more threats and accidents that happen because of what is going on in front of the rider rather than what is happening behind the rider. That's why it's so important for us to maintain a good following distance and to position our motorcycle so that we can see up the road so that we can see the hazard as soon as possible and avoid the situation. If we can see the situations up the road, we can adjust on the road rather than react, and that greatly reduces the threat that's coming up behind us. So I hope you'll see this video for what it is, not an attack on a fellow writer or fellow YouTuber, but simply adding to the conversation. I know when it comes to me, there is always more that I can learn, and there are always other people that I can learn from, and it's in that spirit that I offer this video to you. So hopefully you gained something from this. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments. So leave a comment below if there's something you agree with or disagree with. Leave your comment below and let me know what you think. Till next week, guys, it's Kevin with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road. There's a whole lot more to MC Rider than just the weekly videos. Go to mcrider.com slash member. You'll get instant access to the forums and the field guide. You get ad-free MC Rider videos and a whole lot more. Go to mcrider.com slash member for all the details.